in this section I'm going to speak about spanning tree protocol and spanning tree protocol is a protocol used to make sure that my network is loop free and information is going to go in just one direction and for this I need to block some of the ports I need to open some of the ports and this way I make sure that the information goes the right way let's say that there is a server connected to switch 1 and there are devices connected to switch 3 that wants to send information to that server now switch 1 can send information this way to switch 2 and from switch 2 to switch 1 and send it to the server here it can send it directly to switch 1 or it can send it to switch 4 and then send it to switch 1 or it can even uh, go the long way go to switch 2 from switch 2 to switch 4 and then switch 1 and then go to the server and there is a risk that it sends it to switch 2 switch 2 sends it to switch 4 switch 4 sends it back to switch 3 and these are all suboptimal types of um, forwarding the messages to the server so what I need to do on switch 3 is to make sure that only one port is going to be allowed to send the information and that one port is the closest port closest port to the switch one and based on the topology that I have this is going to be the the, the only port forwarding and I need to choose this port there is an election process between the ports you see that right now I have six ports here and I need to uh, choose this port and this is chosen based on a lot of uh, different criteria that we are going to speak about in the next section but let's say that this one is going to be chosen and this is called the root port but before that I need to have a root switch in my network or root bridge as they say uh, root bridge is one of the switches that all the information is going to be forwarded to that so in my case for example I want to send all information to switch 1 because I have servers connected to switch 1 so switch 1 is the, the logical option for me to send all the information to that so uh, if switch 3 wants to send information to switch 1 it is going to send it uh, through Ethernet 0 2 if uh, switch 2 wants to send information to switch 1 the closest port is going to be Ethernet 0 0 and uh, it has two ports of course connected to that but because it doesn't want to risk creating a loop it is going to block one of them so this is going to be blocked and also on switch 3 the other one is going to be blocked and as you can see switch 2 is not going to send information to switch 3 so this is going to block this port for forwarding this one is going to block this port for forwarding and again switch 3 is going to block this port for forwarding switch 4 is going to send information to switch 1 so it is going to use this port it is going to block all other ports for forwarding so you see each switch is going to choose only one port for forwarding information to to the root bridge and this is going to be my root bridge and all the other ports are going to be um, in blocking states so uh, you might say that I have lots of VLANs and I have lots of information to send on my network why should I send all the information to switch one only why should I have this as root bridge only then I have to you know uh, choose a very very strong uh, chassis and uh, that's going to be super expensive for me and also all the links are going to be you know high speed on this switch so uh, ports are going to be very expensive so this is not a good idea so what I need to do is to make sure that only for some VLANs I'm going to choose switch 1 as root bridge let's say that root bridge is going to be just for for, so for VLAN 10 and let's say that there is another server connected to switch 2 uh, this one is my accounting server this one is my database server and let's say that um, I have a storage server connected to switch 3 so maybe this is not the optimal design but let's say that I have done this so a database uh, software is going to be connected to devices that are in VLAN 20 so this is going to be root bridge 
for VLAN 20. And let's say that my uh, storage server is on VLAN 30. So I want to make sure the switch tree is root bridge for VLAN 30. So each VLAN uh, can have its own uh, root bridge. And this is what we call it per VLAN spanning tree. And for each VLAN, we can easily configure this. So it is called per VLAN spanning tree or PVSC. And also there is an updated version, which is called PVSC plus now you might say that this is going to be very hard i i might have 100 vlans in my network and for each one i'm going to choose which 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 bridge is going to be the root bridge which is not optimal design so what i need to do is to group the vlans into different vlans let's say that vlan 10 20 30 uh, all of them are going to have switch one as a root bridge uh, 40 50 60 are going to have switch two as um, root bridge. This is called multiple spanning tree protocol. Behind the scene multiple spanning tree or MSC is going to use PBSC but MSC is a more efficient way of grouping VLANs and choosing uh, which bridge is going to be the root bridge for that and this way our network is going to have a more consolidated type of configuration which is more manageable. So uh, this is what we do. So we chose uh, what port is going to forward information to the root bridge. Let's say that again, switch one is going to be my root bridge here. Now, we have segments between switches. And let's say that the segment between switch three and switch four contains lots of uh, computers. So if I have a computer here, which link is going to be chosen to send information to switch one? Should I go this way or should I go this way? Because both of them have direct link to switch one. Now there is another uh, election between the switches to select which of them is uh, going to be uh, the sender of the information for this segment to root bridge. And the port that is going to be assigned for that, let's say that, for example, this port is going to be called designated port. And the other ports are not going to be used for sending information. Also, you might say that designated port is a port that is open downward from the root switch, root bridge, to other switches, which is something that makes sense because on switch one, you can say that all the ports are open for sending BPDUs to other uh, switches, and all the ports are designated ports, but for switches, only one of the ports downward is going to be open, and that port is going to be used for sending information from that segment to, to the root bridge. And again, we can say that for each VLAN, we can configure this, and we can say that, for example, for VLAN 10, this is going to be my designated port. But for VLAN 20, another one is going to be uh, the designated port. So uh, we can design it, decide it. But we are not going to do all, everything manually because this is going to be done uh, automatically. And in the next section, I'm going to speak about the process of electing, first of all, root bridge, and then uh, root ports, and then designated ports.